As we can see from all of Mark Bradford's best paintings, the layers of posters that he's ripped from the streets are stripped and sanded and worn down and built up and painted over. This painting was previously in the collection of the great Baroness Marianne Lambert. It's a beautiful evocation of the American experience, its complexities, its anxieties, and yet of course also its hope. This work was executed for a show at the Gallery Kluzer, owned by Bernd Kluzer, a friend of Warhol's. The exhibition opened in Munich a few short weeks after the artist's unexpected death in early 1987. This wonderful example from the artist's late period was acquired from the gallery directly and has remained in the same collection ever since. Christopher Wool is an artist who's not an artist. This is a figure who came to prominence in the 1980s in the post-punk milieu of New York City. He's a figure who rejected all of the niceties of traditional artistic practice when such an activity was seen as genuinely radical. It is widely recognized that to paint sculpturally in oil is one of a painter's greatest challenges. And yet to do so with such balance, vibrancy and power is surely the hallmark of a great artist. Ever since his career-defining retrospective at the Tate in 1996, in which this painting featured prominently, Leon Kossoff has come to represent the very best of British and indeed European painting. Now is the time perhaps to reference the relationship between Giacometti and Germaine Richier who studied together in Paris, and indeed who shared many of the same techniques and tropes in their work. That revision is now underway, and we can rightly recognize Richier as one of the most significant and influential sculptors of this or any other period. The importance of McCracken's artistic approach was recognized early in his career, and his work was included in a number of the most important exhibitions of the 1960s, including American Sculpture of the 60s, held at LACMA in Los Angeles in 1967. Casala, from 1985, is a sculpture with a richly painted surface, blurring the lines between conventional painting and sculpture. Banksy is perhaps the leading countercultural artist at work anywhere in the world today, and this is his signature image. The artist often used animals to represent avatars of his own personality, the rat being the unwanted animal that would flit in in the middle of the night, create mess and then run away in the morning. Similarly with the monkey holding the sandwich board, it's a humorous suggestion, but at the same time it's never more politically relevant than right now.